how would you measure the effectiveness of our employee referral program? This is a GCA question that you could get, yeah, if you were an HR employee or in data and analytics or somebody who's in research, but this is actually a GCA question that's asked across the board. My name is Jeff H. Seip. I'm the founder of practiceinterviews.com. And in today's video, we're really just gonna dive right in. I wanna provide a really robust answer to this question. There are a million different paths you could take, but I just wanna dive in, kind of walk you through how I would answer a pretty open-ended question that has a lot of paths, a lot of opportunities. So for overall flow, I'm gonna build in pauses like I normally would, and we're always gonna to default to our favorite fake interviewer, Sue. So I'm gonna prompt, and we're gonna go through it together, and at the end, we'll do a quick sum up. So let's go ahead with the prompt. Jeff, how would you measure the effectiveness of our employee referral program? Sue, I'd wanna clarify a few items to start, and I just would wanna understand right off the bat, have we ever measured the effectiveness of this program before? Okay, so a few other questions I would have is, I'd absolutely wanna understand the scope and scale. So are we looking at doing this just domestically here in the US, or do we want to measure the effectiveness globally? I'd also wanna understand if we're trying to niche down and look at any specific departments or look at all departments. And then lastly, are we trying to focus just in on like the overall engagement, awareness, success metrics, or all of the above? Okay, I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to focus in on just a few items to start. So goals and objectives, obviously gonna be a primary item for us. Effectiveness is all about hitting this desired result. So we'll start with goals and outcomes and obviously look at those success metrics at the end. I'd wanna understand the historical data, specifically in regards to performance of the program. Um, engagement, engagement would be really important and engagement comes from our referrers, actually the recruiting department that handles them, and then the actual candidates that have been referred. Is there a good overall awareness and satisfaction of the program? I'd be looking at those items. We definitely wanna not only take that historical data, but really look into metrics like quality, speed, ROI. We wanna really think about the incentives of the program, are the incentives right? Is the program transparent? What is the actual timeline to complete this and then the critical stakeholders that we would be working with? I know I threw just a lot of items at you. I know I said I would you know, just focus in on a few, but data is gonna be an important one. I think we should start with that historical data, but is there anything else that you'd like to focus in on, Sue? Okay, let's start with that historical data and I'm gonna go in and make just a few assumptions. Google is a huge organization, data-driven organization. So let's assume we have the data that we need and we're not gonna be at a loss for data at all. I do wanna assume that we haven't conducted a recent survey. And lastly, well, it's a pretty big undertaking. Let's just, let's go global because such a large percentage of employees do sit in the US. So if we're gonna target the US, we might as well target everywhere. In order to do this, I'm obviously gonna bring in some critical stakeholders, and that could be maybe some research people, some people from the data analysis team. I'm gonna to wanna to partner with recruiting, and then maybe a few of Google's top referrers over the last year, and some people who have been referred. I really wanna get this holistic view in correlation with that. Let's make sure we're bringing in people from North America, MIA, and APAC on this. And so when we talk about straight up just that historical data. We're gonna want some items from our data and analysis teams, such as number of hires, specifically number of hires as a percentage in comparison to the total hires. That's gonna be the most important number. We wanna track diversity statistics, so number of diverse hires through referrals. Overall interview success rate, uh, we'll be looking at time to hire. We might wanna look at average tenure. Now that would be more of a trending statistic that we can look at, so it may or may not be applicable. Uh, we definitely wanna look at hires by referrer rating. So that could be like best person I've ever worked with, top 5%, top 50%. Then we'd wanna flip over and look at some other items from an engagement perspective, such as participation percentage, satisfaction percentage, overall awareness percentage and then take these items and correlate them strongly with that past survey feedback. 
Okay, I just threw a lot of information at you again, so it's a good pause moment. Um, we could get a little bit more into some of the data, some of the quality, the timeline. We could talk a little bit more about those future surveys and how we're gonna partner with key stakeholders to get that done. Or we could go back and maybe to the beginning and start with goals and objectives. Is there one that you prefer? Okay, I, I think the survey piece is pretty fun. So let's dive in there. And the first thing we need to determine before we launch the survey is how quickly we wanna get that survey back. So I would say something like 30 days is a pretty good timeline. So we could set the tone and set the stage at 30 days. Secondly, is the mandatory piece. Now this is a little tougher because we need to get support from leadership in order to make it mandatory, but that would be my recommendation because referrals, they save the organization tons and tons of money. So I think it would look something like a message every five days, after three messages, five days, five days, five days, then it's a message with your manager CC'd, the next week would be your manager with your skip, and then your manager and skip, skip. Now hopefully we're not getting to that stage. We know it's not gonna be 100% participation, so getting and targeting something in that 90% participation would be ideal, it's still a high number. In order to get this done, we need to make it really clean and short. So let's target maybe like a five minute survey would be good. And this is where the partnership with research comes in because I wouldn't really want to define the types of questions. I would really want to rely on their expertise. And this is when we would meet with critical stakeholders from recruiter, from recruiting, refers, and people who had been referred to just kind of give us data on the overall and process. And then with those critical stakeholders, we'd be diving right back into engagement. And so if we were looking at participation percentage, trending data is going to be really important. So as far back as we can go, um, this may need to trigger a question in the survey of why you wouldn't participate and especially over the last year. Now from a satisfaction percentage, like one of the biggest items we're gonna to wanna to look at is transparency and understand if the overall process was really transparent and if referrers were kept aware of the status of the people they referred. And then lastly, from a satisfaction perspective. We would really want to just understand the incentives and are the incentives built appropriately for this type of program. Lastly is awareness. I want to focus on that in a few areas like awareness. How often is leadership actually asking for referrals? How often is recruiting coming in to do these referral drives and really partner with them? And then have we established strong overall brand ambassadors? Because that is going to be critical for measuring the effectiveness and pushing the effectiveness of this program. And in looking at all this data, we really need to rely on the researchers again to just make sure that they're helping us and that we are really working with those critical stakeholders to make sure that we all agree on the path forward with the researchers obviously making the final decisions on the survey questions. So I think that this would be a good time, Sue, for us to just pause and maybe transition back to those goals and objectives and really correlate the goals and objectives and success metrics together. But is there any other area you'd like me to focus in on? Okay, so let's dive in. I really wanna kind of take those goals and objectives. We know we're trying to measure effectiveness and one of the best ways for us to do that is gonna be looking at the qualitative and quantitative results. So let's start on the quant side. On the quant side, we really have to focus on trending data because we wanna set some aggressive goals. And I'm looking for a year over year increase. So one of the success metrics that I might try and track over the next year is, let's try and increase the number of total hires globally by maybe three to 5%. I think that's one metric we can look at. Another metric would be time to hire. So something simply like a 15 to 20% increase in speed and time to hire for referrals. And maybe we just target the top tier referrals, best person I've ever worked with, top 5%, top 10%. And we could build in a simple system like if you're a top level referral, you pass over the hiring manager stage and you go right into the interview process. We see that note and we just get you right into the process. That could be a step we take. Now on the qual side, this is where we're really gonna take that survey feedback and apply it instantly to really let our audience, let our users know that they've been heard. And so I think as I think about this item, 
I don't really know if Google has full-time brand ambassadors just working on the referral program, but that would be my recommendation. Hiring at least one, if not multiple people to be in this type of role, and that's their job. They create this great brand when it comes to referrals because again, the money saved is gonna be huge. And then that we're also doing and highlighting the successes, that's gonna be a critical item for that brand ambassador to be successful is not only just pushing it, but highlighting these great wins. So, so many different areas that we can focus in on. I think that this is a potentially good stopping point for us, but we can dive into any of those metrics or any of the other items I mentioned. What do you prefer? Okay, I know it feels like a lot and we didn't touch on so many different things like what is our competition doing? How are we looking at NPS scores? There's a million other items we could cover. It just scrapes the surface. But if you can go in this kind of depth and look at what I kind of did in this answer, I focused heavily on collaboration and heavy, heavily on data. And those are gonna be two items that if you go back to time and time again, you're always gonna have fantastic success. Um, I had a lot of fun making this video. I really hope you think it helps. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. Thanks so much.